Welcome to this video walkthrough and overview of using Mozilla Hubs to create virtual learning environments for students in a remote learning environment. So I'm super excited about virtual reality. I used to look at it as like a student creation or creativity environment. But now in this kind of remote learning setting, I'm kind of rethinking the ideas of having kids kind of gather in a remote environment. And there's a number of tools that are readily available for educators to start to build these environments and explore the potential of VR for remote learning. So the one I'd like to start out with is Mozilla Hubs. So you can get to Mozilla Hubs on the web. You can see I'm at hubs.mozilla.com. You can see from here, you can create your first room or you can install the desktop app. So that's what I have running. So I'm going to jump over, the, over to the desktop app to get started. So here we are in the Mozilla Hubs desktop app. I'm signed into my account and now I'm going to create a room. So when you go through the room creation process, it'll bring you to a little island first to get started, but then you'll have the option, obviously, if you're thinking, I don't want to gather my students on this little island, you can choose your scene right away. So I'll jump over to the choose scene option, and you can see there's a number of scenes available that you can choose from. What I'm going to do is pick the one that I think might be a good fit for my group that I'm working with today, and I will pick this kind of like hubs common amphitheater kind of setup. So that's the scene that I've selected. Now you can see down below that you can enter the room on a laptop or you can enter on a wireless um, kind of higher end VR headset. So that's always an option. I'm gonna just do this through the web browser um, just so you can show that this is accessible across a lot of devices. So I'm gonna enter the room and I'm not gonna go in with a VR headset. Again, you can if you want to, you can use an Oculus device. I'm just gonna jump in through the web and enter the room. So you can see that it's picking up my microphone, uh, my internal mic, and then I can just jump right in. So now I've entered the room. So on my laptop, I can kind of navigate where I am in the space using my arrow keys. So I'm just arrowing to the left. Now, if I want to kind of turn and change direction, I'm just going to click and drag. So I'm going down the stairs, click and drag going towards the front of the room, and then I can just click and drag to turn around. So you can see that I'm here. So now that the physical space is built, we need to explore what we are able to add to the physical space. So you can see down below here, you can write messages to the entire room. So I can just say, hello room. But I think what you can really take advantage of is this plus button to add images, PDFs, or assets to the room. And then you can kind of create this virtual space where students can navigate from one area to the other. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign here. And I have a PDF that I'd like to pull and bring into the room. So there's the PDF. You know, I'm considering using this like as a U.S. history teacher, for example. So I have the letter from a Birmingham jail. Now, if I need to move that, I can just click and drag to move that around. So that's what I'm going to do now. Say I'll put this letter over here along this wall. Let me just kind of get it set up. So I'm just pushing it to the back of the space a little bit. So what I'm able to do now is put this file anywhere that I like to. Now, when you're in editing mode, you can change the kind of appearance of the file. And I'm in editing mode right now. But as I walk towards this, you can see that we'd be able to engage with this, uh, with this file with students if we wanted to. So now that that file is here, any files or resources that you add to the room, if you right click on them, you get that kind of full screen view. So you might even have students congregate over on a space, right click and engage in a small reading or a challenge or a discussion prompt. Let go of that and there's the file again. And notice this is a multi-page document so I can click through the document. And then when I right click, again, we have that full page view. Now, any assets that you add to the room can be controlled up here in the top right. You can see there's one asset that's been added. If I click on that, there's the file. 
And then if I click on that particular file, I can jump right to it if I can't find it in the room or as the owner of the room, I can even remove this if I want to. So I'm gonna pull that out and now that file is gone. So let, now let's kind of navigate to the front of the room and here's one feature that I think could be really helpful. If you'll notice across the top of my toolbar here, I have the option to turn on my front facing camera. So it's already using my audio, you can see that. But if I turn on my front facing camera, there I am, and now I'm in the room, and I'm able to provide some instruction or guidance in terms of um, kind of like being uh, the, the instructor in this virtual environment. So you can see all I did was turn on my camera, it's streaming, and it pops it right in there. So if there were students in the room, right, congregating, they'd be able to kind of come over to me, engage in this discussion where I'm kind of sharing ideas with them directly. And then if I want to, I can simply turn that off by tapping on the camera, and now that's off. So there's other tools that are up here as well. We have this kind of little magic wand tool, and what that lets me do is quickly change the scene if I'd like to. I also have a pen or a writing tool. So if I tap on the pen tool, you'll notice it gives me kind of this arrow pointer. But what I can also do, if I click and drag, it allows me to write on the screen if I want to. And then by tapping Control Z, I can pull that off and pull that down. What, I'll just tap on that to turn it off. What I also have the option to do is take pictures of the room and then that photo will be added. So this is really like the basic setup of building a space. There are some settings that we might want to talk about and manage. In the top left-hand corner, you can see this kind of overflow menu. If we open the overflow menu, this is where you can change the room settings if you'd like to kind of modify this and have some control over it. So I'll go to the room settings. And there's, notice down below, room member permissions, like what can other users do? You might not want visitors to your room to be able to create drawings, or um, create, turn their own camera on or create objects and add them to the space. And that's up to you how you'd like to kind of modify that. You can also obviously modify the room name and the room description. More in the overflow menu, right? I can favorite a room, change my personal avatar, change the scene on the fly, or even close it out if I don't want students to be here anymore. If I go to room scene and room info, you can see it just provides a little bit of an overview. We're using the Hubs Common. That's what it looks like. Now we need to get other users involved in this scene as well. So I want to show what it's like when we have kind of a guest joining us, and I'm going to do that on another device. So we have the share option here to push out access to the room, and then we can always see the number of users that are in the room over here, and you can see I'm logged in as me. So let's tap on the share button and see what the option is. So you can see here that we have a hub link that's provided and then a hub code. So we can do hub.link and then get into that code or go to the direct URL. So I'm gonna do that on a second device right now. So give me a second to get that up and running. All right, so now I've joined with a second device um, and you can see up here under the user icon, that device has been added. So I now know there's a second user. That other user can always go in um, and change their name. So on my second device now, I'm actually gonna enter the room. I'll change the name of that user just so it's not some random one. I'll call this one Greg2. So I'm just giving it permissions to use the microphone. And now that other user has been added, you can see that other user came in, they renamed themselves. So now I get to look around and there's Greg2 up there. So with Greg2, what I'm gonna do is kind of move forward here. There we go, so that student came over and visited us and you can see that that student is talking on their device. Back out a little bit. We have a little bit of feedback here. So um, as you get closer to another user, that's when they're going to be able to hear you talking. So as I move a little bit farther away, right, I can't hear that student talking as clearly. If they were to come over to me, I can hear them. So I'll walk up to that student now, that kind of demo visitor to our room. And now I can hear if that student is talking. We have a little bit of feedback because I'm in one space right now. 
So you can get a sense of what this might look like. Now from the student perspective over here, I'm doing this actually on an iPad and I can just click and drag to kind of navigate. And you can see that that user is moving around. Here, I'll walk over here. So I'm just pinching and dragging to move and then using one finger to look around the room. So what will this look like, you know, if the instructor puts themselves up on the room with video, I'll do that right now. And then I'll cut in the student iPad view. So I'm gonna turn on my front facing camera pop myself up on the screen, and now let's navigate over here from the student view. There we go. So now the student is able to look at, um, and I'll cut into the iPad view, the student's able to walk over, they can hear me talking, they can see me on the screen, and then when the student kind of walks away, that audio will get quiet again. Now what's interesting as well is even though you're on the screen, um, your avatar is kind of still in the room, so you have to move your avatar out of the way. So let me turn my screen off right now. And there, so my screen is off. We still have a second user in the room. Um, and notice what I can do as well. I can kick a user out of the room. So on the user list in the top right, if I don't want that student there, or it's not time for them to be in the meeting, I can tap on the student name, hide the student, mute them if I want to, or bump them out of the room. So I'll bump that student out of the room. They've been kicked off on their device. And now we just have me single user in here. So that was kind of a quick rundown and quick overview. I think obviously there's a lot of exploration to do to get up and running with this, uh, maybe a bit of a learning curve to get comfortable with the environment, make sure your students can access the environment. Um, but I just think there's a ton of potential as we are kind of forced to work remotely and thinking about that kind of flat screen interaction and how might we create a space where people can walk around, engage with one another, look at common documents or images, or even have someone kind of sharing and projecting live on the room. So thanks for watching. I hope this overview of Mozilla Hubs was helpful and you can think about getting started with VR in a remote environment.